Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Bruise unboxing. Today we are looking at Deathmatch, the supplement for Dungeon Bowl. So first of all I want to say massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us a free review copy to have a look at a little ahead of time. Yeah, this one took us by surprise, a new supplement for Dungeon Bowl, which came out last Christmas I believe. And this is basically a, um, I guess, a, a historical rematch in a box. I think it lets you reenact the events of the 2393 Dungeon Ball Final as the College of Life takes on the College of Death. Uh, yeah, really cool. What's also really cool is it comes in miniatures as well. We'll throw this over and you'll see in it you get the, the Spike Presents Deathmatch supplement with all the rules on how to play the, uh, the kind of bespoke one-off game. You get some new tiles as well that have some different rules within the game for, for mixing up your games of Dungeon Bowl. And then you get two teams as well. So you've got the Black Widows, which is the College of Death team. And then the Emerald Crusaders, the College of Life team. And then there's also a kind of a wandering werewolf that patrols around the dungeon. And he's taken from the sprue of the, um, the, the Necromantic Death team, I think he's from. Uh, and basically he becomes like a wild roaming werewolf that kind of runs through the pitch. So yeah, really, really interesting. It's uh, at the point of recording this, I don't know how much it is. By the time I've edited it, I possibly will. So I'll stick something on screen now to say how much it is. But yeah, this is interesting. A way of kind of mixing up your games of Dungeon Bowl, giving you some new rules and uh, kind of like a mini spike magazine with it as well. So Really, really fun. So in this video, what we're going to do is have a look at the contents. We'll go through the uh, the deathmatch rule book, see what's different, see what's changed. We'll have a look at all the miniatures. Now, the miniatures are all existing kits from from Blood Bowl. Um, if you've got the original dun original Dungeon Bowl box, you've got quite a few of these mixed college teams now, which is which is pretty fun. Um, so yeah. So what we'll do is crack this open and have a look what is inside. So. If we threw the box over, it's quite a slim box because contents wise, as we see when we open it up, it's got the miniatures for the um, for the various teams. They are all on coloured plastic, like with the original Dungeon Bowl. So you don't necessarily need to paint them up. What you can do is just stick them together and then it's kind of like bone versus green for life versus death. Uh, what we will do is have a quick look at the, uh, the kits though, just because they are still cool kits. Uh, obviously the Dungeon Bowl is slightly different because you get to draw on a kind of a bigger pool of players to make your team. So we'll look at the life sprues first. You get a couple of sprues of uh, halflings. I'm sure they're definitely not going to die a horrific death during this game of the Bowl. So we get two of those for the halfling team. And then we get a high elf sprue as well. Obviously these are all the same as the ones that you'd get separately for um, for games of uh, Blood Bowl anyway. So you're not missing out anything if you know there's no like exclusive models in the box. And then there's two um, death sprues, basically one for each different flavour of undead team that you can get in Blood Bowl as well. So the werewolf off this sprue is used as the wandering werewolf, and then you've also got the other the other death sprue. From Blood Bowl that makes up the uh, the other half of that team, so that's quite cool. Um, obviously, the miniatures are only part of what's in the box, though. The majority of this is really the new tiles and the rules as well. So, if we take that off there, inside we get Spike Presents Deathmatch 2494 Yearbook. We'll have a look at that properly in a little bit. Do you want to have a quick flick through what else is in the box first? So, full assembly instructions for. All of the uh, the players, again, the ball model models aren't too hard to build. They're fairly straightforward, but you get the full uh, assembly instructions there. So no surprises there if you built them previously. And then the last thing in the box are the new tiles. So you get two, I believe, card tiles of new tokens. So again, these are double sided and generally have a kind of a death side and a life side. And there's different things that kind of trigger within the game that have different effects on them. Uh, the, the artwork on them is really, really nice. It's uh, it's very cool. A little uh, halfling buffet going on there maybe in the tuck shop. So yeah, really cool stuff. So move those out of the way. And then we also get another uh, sheet of towels as well. That then expands on them. And these are all used in conjunction 
with the uh, the main tiles that you get in the core dungeon ball box as well so yeah really exciting so what we're going to do now is have a look at the kind of spike supplements and see what is different in our games of dungeon ball so also in the box is the spike deathmatch 2494 yearbook so uh, this follows a very similar format to the other spike magazines that uh, you might have from blood ball essentially this is a kind of like in universe fanzine for the game uh, in this kind of instance around the 2494 final between life and death for the uh, the dungeon ball championship so that's quite fun and this um, basically has extra rules in there but it also lets you um, kind of replay that final which I think is really nice for kind of getting people into the game as we'll see in a bit it's a bit more uh, structured so there's a lot of stuff in here that's kind of like tongue-in-cheek in-universe interviews and the like but there's also some gaming content too um, in particular we get the two teams that took place in the 2494 final the Emerald Crusaders and the Black Widows so these are two pre-made teams that you can use using the plastic models in the box both of them are 1.2 million uh, gold pieces and yeah there's basically you don't need any kind of other models outside of the, um, the kind of models listed here they're kind of pre-leveled up so they've got stat increases they've got new skills and stuff and I think this makes a really nice way of introducing people to Dungeon Bowl um, obviously you can just use the models in the box to make your own team but what I'll probably be doing is painting up these two teams as the teams for this final and then putting the names on the bases and then you've got a nice little sheet with all the different kind of abilities and, and, the, and the profiles for them and you can get a bit of a, a story going on and try and recreate that 2494 final I believe the Emerald Crusaders won the final ultimately but uh, with the box you could potentially play through it and get a different result which is really really cool so it kind of makes it a bit more like a, a standalone board game if you build both the teams like this and then for introducing new players to the game or say you've got a kid who wants to uh, maybe start playing it you've got two balanced quote, quote marks kind of teams that are good to go you don't need to like be creating a team for them or anything they can just use these and, and replay that historical match which I think is a really fun thing um, if you do that you get some special rules that you can use with the teams as well so the life team can't use re-rolls while on a death square and death teams can't use any re-rolls on a life square so in the boxes we saw earlier uh, all the towels are double sided and they have a life and a death side the, the pitch as built for the final has got a mixture of the two and obviously you can use these in your kind of like normal games of death bowl and just kind of mix the towels into the box and, and use them to build your dungeon um, but this this rule kind of means that with the kind of preset one having a mixture of life and death kind of tiles it gives them both kind of advantages and disadvantages for being in different parts of the board which is pretty cool um, so yeah we get some unique rules for both of them and then the pitch layout as per the final and like I say, you, you can create your own ones, but leaning back into that, this kind of feels like it worked really well as a self-contained game. You've got your pre-made teams, you've got your special rules that apply to your different players, and you've kind of got a pre-built dungeon that you can play through. Uh, more so than the starter box, obviously you need that to play this, but I think in conjunction with, you can run some really good intros of Dungeon Bowl and get people kind of the concepts of what you're trying to do across. You know, obviously it's a little bit different. There's only one. There's only one goal. Uh, you've got the, the the ball hidden. You've got the portals and stuff, and then all the wacky stuff that happens as well. I feel it works really well with this box. So, yeah, I think um, what I'll probably do is if I'm introducing new people to the game, I'll run through this. Now, obviously, all the tiles have got different rules in there as well, and there's some really fun stuff in here, like the uh, the tuck shop. For the halflings, a player, if they're in there, can choose to forsake their action in order to visit the tuck shop and see what delicious snacks are available. There's pros and there's cons to doing it. You roll a d6, on a 1 you immediately go prone as you get stomach ache, as you've eaten a perilous pasty, which yeah, I'm sure you don't want to eat and you probably don't want to know what's in it either. Uh, on a 2 to 5, the player gets a free re-roll that only they can use, so that's pretty fun. And then 6, they get to try a brand new superfood and they improve their uh, strength by one so that's pretty cool and that's for the rest of the game 
So that's pretty fun. There's lots of stuff like this. They've all got kind of special abilities. So while you're in the tranquil meadow, you increase your movement by one. The root walk will try and trip you over. Um, the fungus farm, there's a very high chance that, oh, I say high chance, one in six chance, but it's blood bowl, isn't it? So it's going to go off all the time. That something bad happens to you. The fountain of youth, you've got a bit of a gamble where you could either go prone or you could have all your kind of injuries heal up. Some fun stuff. Uh, likewise for death, we've got some unique tiles as well. Now I we mentioned earlier that within the, the one of the death frames there's a werewolf that can't actually be taken by that team. Um, so that is used on the werewolf's lair tile. So there is a dog house, amazingly, on the tile and the werewolf starts in there. Um, and basically at the end of a, a turn, if there's players within that tile, you roll the dice. On a 1+, plus, the werewolf stays in the doghouse. On a 2+, plus, it blitzes the nearest player, which is awesome. And yeah, it tears you a new one. So really wacky, wacky stuff in here. Um, obviously, the kind of the, the, the pre-made layout has quite a few of these, but there's ones that aren't in that kind of default layout because they are double-sided. So if you wanted to, you could create an entirely death or an entirely life pitch using all these. Or I could say just sprinkle them into your current ones. It, really the kind of the key thing in this box is it's expanding those number of different tiles that you've got to add some different environments. But I really like the fact that they've got that historic match and the historic teams so you can play through that event. I think that's a really good touch. Uh, going on through the rest of the book, a lot of it is uh, standard Spike magazine fair where you've got kind of write-ups of the two teams, you've got interviews and stuff. It's really fun. One of my favourite parts in here, there's an interview with a halfling who has created, if we find it, a scale, scale model of a dungeon. And they started building and painting some intricately painted miniatures to, to represent the team. And uh, he's using this 3D miniature environment as a way of training new blood bowl players and, and being able to recreate matches, which sounds very, very familiar. I'm sure we've all done that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's really fun. Lots of cool stuff like that in there. Rules-wise, at the very back, we do get rules for sponsorship deals as well. So there's six different sponsors you can have, and they all give you different effects. So for example, the uh, Crag Falls Catacomb Cartography, uh, you can get a deal with them, and once per game, you can take a player without the ball off the board and put them anywhere else as they've followed the map and got a secret passage somewhere. Equally, Far Blast and Sun's Ordnance Solutions uh, will rig the uh, chests with booby traps. So if the chest is opened and it hasn't got the ball in it, everyone within two uh, spaces gets hit rather than just the people adjacent. So little effects that come into play. Um, again, it just adds a bit of variety to your games. So I think that's pretty fun. And then... At the end of the book, we also get some alternate schemes for some of the teams in here as well. So obviously, the kind of the box as intended is is playing with those those two specific teams for the final. But you might want to do that. You might want to create your own team and just create your own dungeons. So it has a few more different uh, scheme variations in here as well, which is quite handy considering you know there's not many resources with kind of painted examples of dungeon ball teams because obviously it's using a mix from a few a few different uh, Blood Bowl kits, so it's quite nice that that's included in here to give you some ideas on how to paint those and, and some of the other models that can go in the ranges as well. So yeah, so that was a look at um, Dungeon Bowl Deathmatch. Uh, bit of a surprise release, I think the RP for this one's £55, so considering you get two Dungeon Bowl teams, which is cool because ordinarily to get them you'd need to buy like multiple boxes and mix and match them together. Um, so you get two teams in there, and you get all the tiles and the double-sided too. Uh, I think it's quite good. I, I, I certainly think this is a really nice way of um, making the game accessible to new players as well by using that historic 2494 final game as well. I think that's a really, really cool touch. Uh, I, I kind of hope this sells well so we see more of this kind of stuff. It'd be nice every year to have another box with more tiles and two more teams in there. And then obviously gradually you can build up your... Um, your dungeon ball teams because obviously you could just take models from your collection to put together your your kind of college team but it's quite nice having the frames in there to paint them up as the college team to use kind of outside of your games of blood bowl so yeah i think that's pretty fun uh, so yeah let's look at uh deathmatch i've also got a full write-up over on spruceandbrews.com as well so um 
yeah, check that out if you want to kind of a, a deeper dive into it. Uh, we're also going to be painting up these models and hopefully have a game of Dungeon Ball here on uh, YouTube as well in the coming future. So that'd be fun. Keep an eye on that. If you have enjoyed the video, why not give us a follow? We do lots of unboxing videos and painting videos. The painting stream will be starting again soon. And like I say, now that we're in the new studio, we'll be doing some more uh, battles and stuff as well. So that'll be really fun. But yeah, until next time, I hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.